YouTube. Um, today I wanted to do a video on a very special object I recently shot for the last almost two weeks. Uh, it is a slightly longer project than I thought initially, but it turned out really well, so I wanted to share it with everybody. Um, it is the Seagull Nebula. It is a nebula that's situated in between Monoceros and Canis Majoris, also known as IC2177. It's a relatively uh, bright object. You can capture it from telescopes ranging from you know 600 millimeters all the way to 2000. It's a very nice target. It is um, kind of rich in sulfur and oxygen, but still has enough oxygen to make it really interesting. Um, today we're going to look at this object. It's about 30 hours, 10 hours per channel, plus an hour for the RGB stars. We're looking at 31 hours. So let's get into it and see what we have. The telescope I used is the same little RH200, um, 600 millimeters f3. If you don't know this telescope from my channel, I advise you to watch my other videos. I even have it next to me in a bunch of videos, specifically the Horsehead Nebula. So this telescope is on an Ioptron uh, CEM120 EC2, really beautiful mount. It can hold up to 120 pounds. This one's about 40 pounds, as you can see the counterweights. I think the whole setup is about 35, 38 pounds because I have a huge dovetail on it. I think it's a 17 inch uh, dovetail. Um, I use a small guide scope. I've actually upgraded to a different guide scope, but same thing, it's piggyback off the top. I use a QHY600M mono camera photographic with a QHY 7x2 filter wheel with chroma LRGB SHO in there, a SATO 3.5 inch low profile focuser. And here it is taken flats with the IOPTRON flats panel, which is really good when you have a fast scope and you need to take really long exposures for uh, donuts or all that kind of stuff. Um, let's take a look at the data. So here's the S2 data. Looks really good. Uh, it flattened the flat field did really well. I applied a dynamic background extraction a little bit, but it ended up really looking really good. Now let's look at the O3 data. This is a strange, ob strange object. The nebulosity is just at around the wings or the, um, the richer parts and it goes out a little bit, but then goes away. And it's also in the, almost the head of the seagull or whatever that is, uh, this, this part here. Uh, and there's some other planetary nebula around that we'll take a look. So this is the oxygen, looks good, looks clean. Uh, flat field did really well. There's a little, uh, this scope comes with vignetting because it's a very fast scope and the way it's designed, it has vignetting. It can be flat fielded out most of the time. The only issue is when you're imaging on different nights with different um, transparencies, it might be hard to flat field because your um, medium numbers are all, of, all over the place. But in this case, it turned out really well. Lost the hydrogen and this is where you can actually start to see the nebula. The bulk of the oxygen is in this part here going out. There's a little bit in this formation here. There's one planetary nebula, two planetary nebula, three planet, another planetary nebula. Uh, it's actually pretty impressive. This is 600 millimeters with a full frame camera. This is pretty wide uh, and it looks really good. Somewhere over here, outside of the frame, there's the Thor's helmet as well. This looks really good. Let's see what I can do. But first, let's take a look at the workflow I applied today. And this is a basic diagram of what I've done. So you have the uh, S2 HA03 stack, and I'm actually colored them based on the color that they're going to be associated. They're going to they will start uh, start aligned based on the HA layer. Then I stack them with LRGB as an SHO stack. Then I applied blur exterminator. Then I stretched it using the histogram and screen transfer function. After that, I removed the green. After that, I applied the star exterminator to get rid of the stars. Now, the RGB stars and all of these have been aligned initially, so I didn't have to align them. They started aligned that I didn't crop or do anything until then. After I removed the stars, I did a little bit of curse transformation in HDR multi transform to bring some of the details in. I saved that as a TIFF, sent it to Photoshop, where I did some color mixing and texturization. I brought it back in, did noise reduction, and prepared it for the stars. For the stars, I didn't do much. Uh, stacked and aligned to the S2 HA and L3 data. Uh, applied blood exterminator, then stretched it, 
uh, with the same histogram, the skin transfer function is pretty easy, works well. Then I did an SCNR on green, then star exterminator, saved the resulting file as stars, and then using the pixel math script from James Salam, I brought it back in and there you go. So let's look at the results. So here's the stars. Uh, stars actually look pretty good. The <laughs> stacked image did not, so you don't have to take flats if you're doing stars. There is no haloing, the star size is pretty good. You have a diverse number of stars. You have um, orange, blue, I think a few red stars, but it looks really good. I was happy with these stars and you can see there's almost like different um, amount of density uh, depend depending on where you look. The stack also looks really good. This is with the blood exterminator applied, so much detail in the arms of this nebula here. Um, now this is a little, oh, sorry. This is a little blown out towards the left, but I know I could bring it back in. But again, detail in this formation here, really nice and clean. The dark nebula still shows up. This big star looks really good. Um, and there's faint, faint nebula still all around. As you can see here, it's quite faint. Um, so let's move on and see, this is the Staros image. And again, the deconvolution really did a good job. As you can see, these pretty shuttle formations in here look really nice. I even like this dark nebulosity in here with this star that's almost hiding from the from view. Again, here's a small planetary nebula. Here's another planetary nebula that looks like almost like a reflection, like a lens flare. Here's another one, which looks really cool. Um, and another oxygen three planetary nebula. The detail I'm really happy with. I wasn't too happy with a few things, like there's a little bit of vignetting that didn't go away, so I'll probably crop that, fix it in the end. But time to reveal the actual image. I think it turned out pretty amazingly. Here it is. Um, I actually think it's quite impressive. And again, I'll zoom in into some of the features, like some of the features in this the wall of nebulosity, this nebulosity here, the... Um, head or whatever this formation is with this little thing that comes out of it. This planetary nebula looks good. That planetary nebula looks good. Nice. It is more than I thought I could do. I like the, how the red goes into the gold. Um, I've shared it with a couple of my friends. They said, well, maybe the red and the gold is kind of too harsh on the transition, but I reduced the saturation a bit and I think it's good. Now the RGB stars are in here. So there are certain stars that uh, have the, their natural color. Most of them had their natural color, but when you do RGB stars, you don't know what you're going to get. A lot of them are going to be white, but a lot of exceptional, exceptions like this, which is, you know, a big old orange star here. And as you can zoom in, the star size is really good. You can see really small, like pixel size stars. This is where the Honda's is a really good, really good telescope. Um, 32 hours at F3, it's more than enough. Um, I've seen a lot of photos of this. I think Antoine from Galactic Hunter had a pretty good image of this. And there's a couple of A-pods from a while ago. Maybe in the future I'll do a mosaic to capture this left side, but that would have been another 20 hours. So I thought, hey, this is a nice enough image. Uh, the detail is above what I would expect in an image. Um, the oxygen flows really well. It looks, um, it looks like something I'm, I would be happy to share. Now, I also have a Starless version that also looks pretty amazing. Uh, if you look at the Starless version, you see how much nebulosity is everywhere, and that's pretty impressive. Now, uh, in this case, a rare case, I actually like the star version, which is, again, kind of rare because most of the time I focus on the Starless image. Well, I'm curious to think, think what you guys think about this one. I definitely feel like it's one of my strongest uh, images with the Hunters and the wider the wide field uh, scope. Um, if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Anything you want to do to support the channel is welcome. And yeah, if you have questions, I'm here to answer them. And until next time, clear skies.